How's it going folks? It is Matt back with another crypto video. Today's a quick update on Digibyte. We got a new exchange listing and really the bulk of what I wanted to talk about today is revolving around Visa and Kroger and uh, you know that news that came out I believe it was yesterday. So getting right to the news this first tweet I have from Jared Tate saying once again the beauty of a blockchain like Digibyte is there is no Digibyte company to go bankrupt. There are no employees to fire, no ICO funds to squander, no pre-mine to burn. We are lean, mean, and truly decentralized. We will thrive. And he tweeted this after uh, the news broke that Dash, the core group of Dash, is set to lay off some staff members during the crypto winter of the bear market. And, you know, Dash is a big player in the space. Uh, they're definitely uh, in the top 15. Uh, they were in the top 10 at some point uh, last year. But, you know, it's just... A recurring theme now that as this bear market persists, more and more projects are uh, forcing to lay off some of their employees just to, you know, simply stay in business. And that's another reason, you know, aside from being technologically superior, that's the reason I am bullish on Digibyte is the fact that it can't go bankrupt. There's no company. So uh, when thinking of investments or talking in terms of investing in a project, if you can invest in a project that can't go bankrupt, you know, they can't run out of money. It, that's just a safe investment in my mind. You know, I'm not a professional financial advisor, but, you know, if you invest in Digibyte, uh, you can at least take comfort in the fact knowing that that company is not going to run out of money because it's not a company, you know. As he said, there's no employees. So, uh, you know, it's just a safe investment in my mind knowing that uh, that company can't miss handle their uh, spending budget and then as a result go bankrupt or if the markets are bearish for quite some time they can't just run out of money because there's no money to run out of. Uh, so moving to this second tweet this is uh, from Rudy Bauman. Covesting has announced the listing of Digibyte on their platform and it's the first ever listing under the supervision of Covesting and the GFSC. This is a look at Covesting's website itself. If you're unfamiliar with the GFSC, it's the Gibraltar Financial Service Commission. And basically, you know, it's like uh, being regulation compliant. So it's a, a regulation compliant exchange. And I found it interesting that Digibyte was the first asset they chose to list after they got this GFSC. You know, it's not like they uh, listed 100 different currencies and they're like, all right, well, now what do people want? and then make the decision to list Digibyte. No, it was as soon as they got this regulation compliance, they're like, all right, step one, list Digibyte. So, and it was pointed out in another article that this exchange, yes, it's new, so it's not massive yet as compared to like a Binance or something, but it's, it's just like the overall sentiment now as new exchanges pop up, Digibyte is on, in their short list to list the currency because they realize the, how superior it is and that it is, uh, you know, absolutely worth listing the project because people are going to use it in the future. And, uh, you know, just uh, the exchange listings are great, and then it seems like the overall sentiment around Digibyte is, is moving in an upward trend as some of these headlines are showing. Uh, you know, will Digibyte's growing popularity lead to soaring prices? You know, I hope so. Uh, this one, Digibyte in a sea of altcoins, what makes Digibyte stand out? Uh, you know, if, if you are already interested in Digibyte, if you've already done your research, you know what makes it stand out. And if you're a new investor and you're unsure why Digibyte does stand out from the crowd, you know, follow my channel, uh, check out the videos. I, I report on Digibyte quite frequently. Uh, this other article, Digibyte price gains 5% as the community tries to appease YRX. You know, certainly uh, getting on that crypto card YRX would be a big deal for the Digibyte community. Uh, you know, so hopefully that does seem to happen or that does happen sometime in the near future. But at least we're on PaySent now. You know, I think PaySent's uh, opened it up to 65 million different merchants, I, I believe. Uh, anyway, getting to the bulk of what I wanted to talk about today, uh, this was from the Ethereum World News. The fourth largest private employer in the U.S. says no to Visa, and they may accept Bitcoin. So this is Kroger, who is, you know, I didn't know about it until this article, that they are the fourth largest private company in the entire United States. You know, that's a big deal. And they're now saying no to Visa. And it's not like a, an all-out nationwide ban. Uh, you know, that, that could be a potential in the future, but, you know, they, they got to take baby steps in here to transition from uh, the legacy system to uh, cryptocurrency or, you know, just cheaper solutions than Visa, which cryptocurrency certainly is 
cheaper than Visa, MasterCard, or any other uh, solution that requires a third party to handle the funds. You know, all, all these third parties are just uh, charging fees to uh, obviously fund their operation, but it's not required anymore. You know, there's better options out there. And, uh, you know, shout out to Kroger for recognizing that. So the chief financial officer at Kroger uh, said they will no longer accept Visa cards at any of their Smith's food and drug stores beginning on April 4th. So this is uh, moving quickly, one month away. Uh, these food and drug stores will no longer accept Visa. They said uh, that these food and drug stores have 20,000 employees spread across the United States operating in 134 branches. So again, it's not like a nationwide uh, ban of Visa at Kroger. It's just their food or the Smith's food and drug stores, so 134 branches. It's still a big deal, though. They're not accepting Visa due to the fact of its high transaction fees. You know, uh, Visa, as pointed out in this article, compared to MasterCard and other options out there, Visa typically has the highest fees because, you know, it's pretty much like the gold standard. You know, uh, everybody has a Visa card of some sort, and they operate basically on a global level through all the major currencies out there and that's why it makes uh, you know merchants easily accept visa because uh, you know it, it opens up the doors to new customers and all of these other benefits but uh, you know they're moving away from visa due to the high transaction fees which uh, you know leads me to digibyte and digicafe so you know digicafe is a product of digibyte where basically it allows the merchant to download an app on their phone computer uh, tablet, you know, any any device connected to the internet that can access the App Store can download DigiCafe, and once this is downloaded, which it's free to download, uh, they can accept Digibyte at the point of sale. And I, it was interesting that you know, there one Kroger's getting rid of Visa, and they may accept Bitcoin. You know, I I think that's pretty much going to be a guarantee that they will accept cryptocurrency at the point of sale. Uh, you know, that's just the way society is moving. It's going to move in, over the next couple of years and for the reasons of it being much, much cheaper and much, much faster. So if they want to explore Bitcoin, you know, if someone bought a $4, uh, something $4 at Kroger's uh, and used Bitcoin, you know, the transaction time is 10 minutes. And can, when you compare that to Visa, you know, before Kroger gets their payout, it could be two to three days. So definitely Bitcoin is a drastic improvement on the speed of Visa and MasterCard. And in terms of transaction fees, you know, the Bitcoin fee, 40 cents for the $4 coffee or $4 item, whatever you buy. That's definitely another drastic improvement on uh, Visa and MasterCard and all these other systems. But if they're exploring Bitcoin, they have to open their minds and, you know, broaden the horizons and start to look at other projects that may be better than Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin is definitely better than Visa, but there's options out there that are better than Bitcoin. You know, Litecoin, for example, same $4 item. Transaction time is 2.5 minutes instead of 10 minutes. Transaction fee is 3 cents instead of 40 cents. You know, it's definitely a drastic improvement on Bitcoin. And then you got Digibyte all the way over here on the right. Same $4 item. Transaction time of 15 seconds and a transaction fee of 0 .0001. And, you know, it's basically free and it's essentially instant at the same time. You know, uh, buying the $4 item with your Visa card, uh, one, you're going to pay the fees. And then, uh, two, Kroger has to wait two to three days to receive that money. Whereas if they chose Digibyte, uh, there's basically no fee. It's fractions, fractions of a penny. And Kroger will have access to that money within two to three minutes. You know, it's it's basically instant. So it's a massive improvement on the legacy system of using Visa and MasterCard and, you know, eliminating these middlemen with their hands in their pockets, you know, basically just stealing all of your profits by charging you these uh, fees just to simply move money around. You know, it's, it just doesn't make sense anymore now, now that there are, you know, better options out there. Uh, this was a, I showed this in a video not that long ago. This was a post from Block 30 Labs that kind of shows uh, more detailed on Digibyte transactions versus Visa specifically. Uh, so a customer buying $2,500 worth of some product with Digibyte, uh, you know, the again, the transaction fee is 0 .001. So the merchant deposits basically $2,500 into their account. It's $2,499.999 into their account. 
definitely an improvement on Visa, where as you can see, same $2,500 purchase. Uh, first Visa charges you the $43.75 interchange fee, then you get charged the $37.50 credit card processing fee, and then you get charged the $3.25 dues, fees, and assessments, and ultimately the merchant is left with $2,415.15. You know, that's a loss of $80 simply by using Visa. And, and that's big, you know, especially if, uh, you know, you're having hundreds or thousands of transactions every single day, uh, you know, that adds up and that to a big chunk of your profit is just being spent simply to use Visa. So that's why, you know, Kroger is looking to explore op other options. And again, with digital assets, uh, you receive that money instantly or, you know, basically instantly within just a couple minutes as opposed to Visa, you're waiting 48 to 72 hours to have access to those funds. And uh, as far as the risk of fraud, Digibyte is being decentralized. It's an integrity-based uh, integrity based on cryptography. And, you know, Digibyte's blockchain is one of the most secure with its five mining algorithms as compared to, you know, one mining algorithm of a lot of the other projects out there. Uh, as far as Visa, it's a centralized system. It's susceptible to human errors and fraud. You know, with central servers, they are easier to hack. You know, it's just the simple fact. If... If there's one point of failure, hackers can target that specific one point. But through a decentralized system, uh, you know, it definitely makes it harder. Digibyte being spread over 200,000 different nodes uh, makes it very difficult to pinpoint which part you should attack. So that will wrap up today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell to get notifications. Like it, share it, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys later.